Welcome back. This is Adventures with Dr. Joe. This is the solution to fixing problems with incomplete printing, where the printer starts, starts to make the print, and then suddenly the filament quits extruding, but the printer doesn't know that. It keeps printing and printing in the middle of air, not extruding anything, and you get these terribly frustrating incomplete prints like these. So here's a propeller that incompletely printed. Here's a, a filament reel. Here's two examples where I was trying to print this part, but look where they stopped. They stopped here, they stopped here, and I couldn't figure out why. So I took a close look at the filament. Do you see that area that was ground out? And I thought, oh, I don't have enough pressure on the feed roller, so I need to increase the pressure on this area. So I did a few things. So the first thing I tried is, again, I want to put more pressure on these idler wheels that are pushing against the filament, which is in here. So you can see the filament inside the extruder against that, that, that roller that drives it. And there are two ball bearings here, two bearings. And, and when you push that in, that's putting pressure on that. And I thought, well, we'll have to just increase the pressure on that. So I added a thin film of plastic from a filament bag. And that helped a lot. But then I realized that wasn't the right thing to do. What we need to do is adjust the tension on these rollers, on these two screws that have a spring here. And that takes a two and a half millimeter hex drive. And I printed some new covers that go over the dwarf board that have a hole in them so you can adjust these. And so I tightened these up and that was helpful but it still didn't fix the problem, and I was more and more frustrated. I noticed that when I would print with really high quality filaments, such as Prusamet, which is exactly 1.75 or 1.74 millimeters in diameter, so because, this, because the drive gear was spinning and my increasing pressure wasn't helping, I thought if I got a better Bowden tube, the tubing that goes from the filament reel to the extruder, a higher quality one, I could get a better result. That didn't help, ironically. I bought the Capricorn Bowden tubing, the, uh, the Gore-Tex tubing made by Capricorn, supposed to be the very best, still didn't help. The next thing I tried was to try to minimize the amount of tubing. And you notice I just have little segments of tubing here. And I did that all the way uh, and put a little tape on there because they were slit, they would slide and that hold, held them in position. This is the original Prusa material. And you can see here the Capricorn. This one has the Capricorn tubing and you can see the smaller segments. And that doesn't work and that's not a good idea because without the tubing, if this starts to pull, it will really shorten up this, this cable and distort it. And you can see that I've actually distorted this one quite a bit. And that's not a good idea. You need to have the full length tubing in here to exert some resistance so that, the so that this whole arc is maintained. So you've got to have a continuous tubing in here. Then I thought, wait a minute, this might all be about diameters. So I started to check the diameters of some of these lesser quality value, bargain price. I like to do that. Uh, filaments that I bought from Amazon made in China, they're not all 1.75, they're 1.77, 1.78. So they're a larger diameter and they were getting stuck in the Bowden tubing and when I noticed that the filament wasn't being driven, I disconnected it, I unloaded the filament and tried to pull it through that Bowden tubing, very difficult. So I went, wait a minute, let's take a look at these different tubings and let's look at their inside diameters. I have a very high quality digital caliper, Mitutoyo, it's a real one. I, and then I measured the inside diameter of all of these Bowden tubings, the tubing that goes from the reel, the filament reel to the extruder. These are the original ones from Prusa, they measured about 2.25 to 2.33 millimeters. This Capricorn tubing, 1.82 to 1.92, and this 
another type of Capricorn, supposedly the absolute original, 1.90. So they were still a little bit smaller and causing some issues because the filaments that I was using weren't, weren't perfectly at 1.75. Then I found this tubing. This is a, this is a Gore-Tex tubing, 2.50 millimeters in diameter, and this has solved my problem. So the way to change to the new tubing is pretty straightforward. Unload the filament, there it is. Take your tubing, or if you've got these little segments, which I currently do, out. Leave some, leave some filament extending from your, from your Gore-Tex tube, and then literally push it through. There it goes. And then we'll cut it to length after we determine where it needs to be on the side of the filament sensor. So here it is coming out. It can easily fit into number five. I've got a filament in these because I'm try I've actually bypassed the filament sensor to help reduce uh, drag even further. And then we'll measure the tube on the extruder side. So on the extruder side, we'll just snap it into place. Making sure it's not redundant and not tight. Just fills that, follows that nice gentle curve. And then here, where it's going to go into the extruder, we'll cut it to length with this cutter. And there it is. So by using this Gore-Tex tubing that has an inside diameter of 2.5 millimeters, even inexpensive, poorly quality controlled filaments, unfortunately I buy quite a bit of those, flow without a problem and print failure has stopped. This is a simple solution. A link to where to purchase this, it's inexpensive, it's not nearly as expensive as that Capricorn, very, very ultra slippery uh, Gore-Tex tubing. This has changed my life and made me a lot happier. If this was helpful, please click thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Thank you.